I remember playing hide and seek as a kid. I would run away as they counted, slotting myself in the smallest of places, waiting to be found. I could play this game for hours, knowing that I could escape from the world if only I kept still. The thing about playing hide and seek is that we get so good at the game that we find ourselves hiding every day. We sort of hide our inner selves. Societal norms put certain constraints on us and we're conditioned to fit ourselves in these norms. We have to, get a, we have to go to school, we have to get a job, we have to get married, have kids, but in all of that, where are we? I want to tell you about a trip that took me to Bangladesh. I was literally on the other side of the world and a chance meeting helped open my eyes to my passion. When I was just 12 years old, I met a young woman named Shafia in Bangladesh when I was accompanying my grandmother, who was a humanitarian. Shafia was a victim of domestic violence. If everything had been taken away from her, her home, her child, her entire life, for me at that time, there was nothing more jarring than looking into the eyes of a suffering woman, our fate separated only by chance. That look in her eyes never left me. They were empty, devoid of any desire to exist. As a 12-year-old, that kind of destitution can be pretty hard to fathom. That reality was so far removed from what I knew that it was frightening. To see that level of need and deprivation where a human being is stripped of everything their dignity, their sense of being, that experience is profound. Moments in our lives don't necessarily trigger the start of something right there and then. It can be something like this that stays with you and keeps tugging at you until you finally do something about it. As I look back at that moment, I realize that meeting Shafia was what sparked my overwhelming, de overwhelming desire to help. At 12, I didn't really have an epiphany about what I wanted to do but that experience stayed with me and became part of my conscience until I finally had an opportunity to do something about it. Four years ago, when I arrived at SMU, I was still thinking about Shafia. So I took action by founding a nonprofit called the NARI Project. I created the NARI Kit, which is a transitional crisis kit that helps domestic abuse victims transition from a critical situation to a place of safety. The kit includes everything from basic necessities like food, money, and clothing to a copy of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. The idea behind the kit is pretty simple. Imagine if your house burned down or for some reason you were left on your own with nothing. The kit would help you get through those first few crucial days. With the support of a lot of wonderful people, I was able to create the NARI kit and see my desire to help actually become a reality. In my experience with NARI, there is one story that is particularly moving. There was a young woman named Tanya who was just a few years older than me. Um, Tanya was in an abusive relationship and if she lived here, she could have been one of my classmates. Um, Tanya was a work, even though Tanya was born into a poor family, she was working and making a living for herself. And despite having a level of independence that a lot of women in that part of the world don't enjoy, she was still a victim of severe abuse. The abuse grew to such an extent that her husband lit her on fire. Tanya had been stripped of her sense of being. For Tanya, the kit was like a life vest. It helped her get through those first few crucial days, and it showed me that I was able to make a difference in one person's life. I could have stopped there, but helping Tanya inspired me to expand the NARI project to more women in Bangladesh and also in Dallas. Now, I'm just beginning here. I've only helped about 150 women in Bangladesh and Dallas. The destination of this journey of mine is to take this effort global and help the Tanyas of the world in every corner of the earth. When I've helped hundreds of thousands, millions even, that's when this journey of mine will be complete. I realize now that helping these women was what my inner self was always searching for. I was searching for a way to do more than just feel sorry for someone or send a check once a year. What I feel now that I've been able to help these people is this really great sense of serenity of being whole, almost as if this was what I was put on the earth to do. I'm graduating in May with degrees in fashion media and finance. It always surprises people that I have an interest in fashion journalism and human rights. If you had asked me a few years ago what made me feel alive, I really wouldn't know. But the thing is, a human being's existence isn't singular. We don't have to have just one passion. If my years were dollars, I would maybe be able to buy a nice dinner with all the life I've lived. But that's not the part that scares me, that that's all that I am right now. 
What I'm worried about is, at the end, whether or not I found what I love. TV shows, magazines, billboards, they don't tell you to go to the other side of the world. And I'm not telling you to get on a plane. What I'm saying is that by sharing my story with you, I hope that I was able to convey how important it is to actively seek your passion. I don't want to live my life in a dispassionate pursuit, devoid of any clear understanding. I don't want to grow up and lose my sense of passion. The nine to five world, it robs the inner child of dreams and doodles. The extent of this lack of passion is evident in how people view Monday versus Friday. What lies between those two days is the dreaded work week. What I started seeking at 12, I finally found at 18. As a 12 year old, I had a question, but I really didn't have an answer. At 18, I answered that question, clearly understanding where I was and what I needed to do. I'm so grateful that I was able to find this at my age, and I'm really excited for what the future holds, but I'm eternally grateful to, to, for that this chance encounter led to helping women like Tanya and Shafia. Thank you so much for this opportunity to share my story.